right so and today we are going to see reflection api and the core content that is in j2sc part so before going to start reflection api first of all what is reflection reflection is the process of analyzing all the capabilities of a particular class at a runtime for example i have a class for the class what exactly the access modifiers list what exactly the super class and what are the interfaces which are implemented in the respective class and the details about variables and the details about constructors and the details about all the methods which were declared in a class i want to gather all these details so to to gather all these details we need some api provided by java that api is called as reflection api so first of all what is reflection the process of analyzing all the capabilities of a particular class at the runtime of our application is called as reflection to perform reflection we need some api or a set of predefined classes provided by java that api is called as reflection api fine where we are going to utilize reflection api reflection api is not at all useful in the project development reflection api is very much useful in a product development best example compiler construction jvm architecture jvm design servers design frameworks design tools design in all the products reflection api is utilized in effective manner for example if you take any case to analyze the reflection api the requirement of reflection api for example i have taken a class class a i have taken where some data is available now i want to declare this class is private private class i have taken here private class in the sense definitely compiler will raise an error because in a java programming language classes are not at all possible to declare with a private keyword outer classes are not possible but inner classes we may declare as a private but outer classes are not at all possible to declare as private definitely in this case compiler will raise an error like modifier private not allowed here this kind of error will be raised by the compiler how compiler will raise this error can how it is possible for compiler to raise the error in this particular scenario here private modifier is not allowed for classes how compiler will aware private the class is declared with a private and how it is saying private is not allowed for the classes then if we come for this particular point now understand it if we give this file to the compiler think about it this is a compiler now this is a compiler compilation is going on in a compiler a set of rules and regulations are available for classes classes rules under this classes rules now access modifiers for the classes access modifiers for the classes if you take now only which access modifiers are allowed public and default these two things are allowed but which things are not allowed there private and like a protected these two things are not allowed so whenever we are giving this java file to the compiler compiler first it will read uh, what exactly the declarative part of the class game especially it will read the access modifier for class a that is private what exactly the access modifier is declared for class a that is private it will read that now it will go for classes rules now where it will check uh, 
private is allowed private is available in the allowed access modifiers list or not in the allowed access modifiers list only public and default these two things are available but private is not available in the classes rules and especially in the access modifiers list whenever private is not available insert this access modifiers list then immediately it able to raise an error what about this error here clearly modifier private not allowed here let's say for example in place of this private if we provide for example public public is a access modifier for class k then again compiler will read access modifiers list of this class k then it will compare public is available in the access modifiers allowed access modifiers of classes are not public is available so it will not raise any compilation error whenever it is not generating any compilation error then it able to generate like a dot to class files compilation will be success then it able to generate dot to class files now in this scenario overall the main functionality of compiler to check errors with respect to access modifiers is first it has to read the declaration part of the class game including access modifiers it has to read the data declarative part of class game then it has to compare all the declarations of class game are available in the classes rules and regulations or not if the declarations are satisfying classes rules and regulations then it will not raise any error then it will generate some dot class files if the declarations are not available in the respective classes rules no classes declarations are violating rules and regulations of this classes no then definitely compiler will raise an error no now in this scenario compiler first it has to read the declarative information about this class k like access modifiers like uh, super classes like implemented interfaces variables information methods information and a constructors information all this all this data must be taken by this compiler to read the declarative information about class k it has to use internally some reflection api it has to use internally which one they know reflection api this is a requirement to go for reflection api inside the compiler the compiler was designed in such a way to check all the compilation errors by reading the information of the respective classes maybe it may be variables information it may be methods information it may be classes information it may be constructors information whatever it may be the total declaration information about class a must be taken by compiler to read this declarative information about class a internally compiler must use a separate api that api is called as which one reflection api in this particular scenario we are able to use a reflection api this is one example next example if you take another example in a case of jvm some examples we are able to identify now see this now for example i have taken class a in the class a i have declared some constructor in bigger parameterized constructor some implementation part in the class test i have given public static void main string array ox now inside this throws exception Let's insert this main method. Class dot for main method of a with this a class bytecode will be loaded to the memory. Then after that, a small a is equal to bracket a. Like we need to write class c is equal to like this. A small a is equal to bracket a. C dot new instance method like this. A simple program I have written. 
class C is equal to class dot fernum of A. By using this intersection, A class bytecode will be loaded to the memory. A class metadata, information about class A will be collected by JVM. That data will be stored in the form of class object. The class object is referred by C variable. On that C variable, if you access new instance method, JVM must create object for class A. To create object for class A, JVM must go for class A, where it has to search for a zero argument constructor and a non-private constructor. By using new license method, we are going to create an object for class A. But to create an object for class A, JVM must search and execute zero argument constructor and a non-private constructor. JVM is searching for zero argument constructor. But here, which constructor is provided here now? Parameters will constructor is provided. But JVM must require which constructor now? Zero argument constructor. So in this case, definitely, we are going to get an exception. That exception will be which one? Java dot lang dot initiation exception will be raised. Initiation exception will be raised. Identify it now. So this is about JVM is going to raise any sensation exception. How how JVM is raising this any sensation exception? What exactly internal concepts relate to raising this particular exception by the JVM? For example, if we give this coding part to the JVM now, now this is JVM. What JVM will do internally? JVM is having a set of rules and regulations with respect to new license method. Its a functionality is available. New license method functionality is available. New license method functionality is available. Inside this functionality, this is a predefined library. Functionality is available. Here it must require which one here? Non-private and zero argument constructor is required inside this new instance method there to create an object. But here JVM is reading which constructor is available in class game. That constructor is which one private code parameterizable constructor. But it is expecting zero argument constructor. But it is identifying parameterizable constructor. Zero argument constructor is not available. So in this particular situation directly JVM is raising an exception that is which one Initiation exception it is identifying. Initiation exception it able to rise. How it able to rise now? First it has to search for zero argument constructor in the class game. But it identifying parameterized constructor. So first it has to read the constructor's details from class game. Which constructor is available from class game? It has to read the constructor details of class game. Then it will search whether zero argument constructor is available or not. If zero argument constructor is available, it will get object for class game. If zero argument constructor is not available, then it has to read, it has to raise an exception. That exception will be which one again? No, initiation exception. Now, in this scenario also, JVM must read must read data of class game. That means which data of class game now? Constructors details of class game. Where all the list of constructors, JVM must check whether zero argument constructor is available or not. If it is not available, exception will be raised. To raise this exception, JVM must read the information about class gay, constructors details about class gay. To read information about class gay, JVM must use internally reflection API. This is the purpose of this reflection API. This will be used by JVM. Not only in the case of compilers, not only in the case of JVM, if you go for testing tools, if you go for debugging tools, if you go for servers, if you go for all frameworks, in everywhere, in everywhere, internally, reflection API will be utilized. So because of this reason only, we will conclude that reflection API is not useful in the project's development, but reflection API is useful in the product development. 
For this purpose only we are using reflection API in our J2SC part clearly. Good.